again. Uh, I was going to say, no lie. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. All right, this is Matthew. Matthew wants to tell you all something. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, he will. <laughs> all right, he's shy. All right, give him a hand anyway. All right. Well, your face came out on camera. That's all that matters. All right. You may be seated. Praise the Lord, everyone. How's everybody doing today? The mule. God bless you, my brother. How are you today? How's everybody doing? Everybody good? Toby? Yes. Right. The Marion. Becky in the back. Of, hey, Becky's back. Rebecca, praise the Lord. All right, everybody have their Bibles? Still in Biblia? Praise the Lord. You're ready, for, you're ready for the word, right? All right, let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. Vamos a ir al libro de Apocalipsis, capítulo 3, verso 20. Giving a greeting to all my brothers and sisters watching on YouTube and Facebook. Especially my brother, Victor Salgado. Victor, God bless you, my brother. We got a chair waiting for you, papito, okay? Just letting you know. You got to come. Not I'm going to you. I'm going to be doing Bible study in your house. All right. All right, everybody there, todo lo tienen? Apocalipsis capítulo 3, verso 20. All right, and the word of the Lord reads as follows. Dice la palabra de Dios de esta manera. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Nos dice la palabra de Dios en el libro de Apocalipsis, capítulo 3, verso 20. He aquí, yo estoy a la puerta y llamo. Si alguno oye mi voz, si alguno oye mi voz y abre la puerta, entraré a él y cenaré con él y él conmigo. Paz de Cristo, hermano. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. He stands at the door. I think the young people used to know that song, right? Maybe some of the old timers. Nobody? Behold, behold, I stand at the door and knock, knock, knock. No? All right. What do you all listen to, young people? Or is that just old music for old people? It's old, old. Is that what it is? Yeah, it could be one of the songs I used to listen to 30 years ago. But the word of the Lord tells us, la palabra de Dios nos dice que el Señor está a la puerta. And the Lord tells us in scripture that he is at the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Dice, estoy a la puerta y llamo. Now, I know that we have read this scripture, hemos leído esta escritura, and I know that this scripture usually gets applied to the whole entire world. La escritura se la aplica al mundo. You know, he's standing at the door. Anybody want to open the door, he'll come in. But when you look at the scripture, it's really relating to the church. Cuando mira la escritura, en realidad relata a la iglesia. And if I'm not mistaken, he's talking to the church that was in Laodicea. Está hablando de la iglesia que estaba en Laodicea. And it was a church, era una iglesia, que tenía ciertos problemas. Had, a, uh, had slight problems. And to think, first of all, what is Jesus Christ? Standing on the outside of any church. You know, no entiendo por qué Jesucristo va a estar fuera de cualquier iglesia. Shouldn't he be in the inside? No debe estar adentro. He should be inside. But the problem with this church, el problema con esta iglesia, is that they had sufficiency. Ellos tenían suficiente. They had riches, tenían riquezas. They had a way of providing for themselves. And it was a church that was self provided They provided. Una iglesia que podía proveerse por ellos mismos. We live in a society, vivimos en una sociedad, que mientras que todo nos va bien, as long as everything in life is good and we're able to supply our own needs by working and everything is good and we got health and we got strength and all the children are behaving good, everybody has a tendency of leaving Jesus outside. Mientras que las cosas nos van bien, hermano, y parece que vamos prosperando la vida y todo nos parece suficiente. Ya tengo dinero, tengo salud, tengo mi casa, tengo trabajo, lo tengo todo. Tengo la tendencia de dejar que Jesucristo se mantenga afuera 
de mi hogar. But and then the Lord is standing at the door and he is seeking a way to get into your lives. El Señor con su gran amor está a la puerta, toca porque él quiere tener una relación contigo. He wants to have a relationship with you. We need Jesus. Necesitamos a Jesucristo. We need him. Amen. We're living in times, estamos viviendo en tiempos donde pensamos que podemos hacer las cosas sin Jesucristo y estamos muy equivocados. We think that because the society in which we live in and we don't see no persecution, no vemos ninguna persecución, we see the self-sufficiency of our nation, vemos la nación que está todo y te provee por eso mismo. We got work, we got money, we got cars, we got air conditioning, we got technology, we got everything that is advancing at a rapid pace. Y pensamos porque tenemos carro, aire acondicionado y la tecnología y todo lo que está avanzando a una, una, una velocidad rápida. Tenemos la tendencia de no incluir a Jesucristo en nuestra vida sin darnos cuenta que sin Jesucristo no podemos. We will not be able to fight what's happening out there. And there's a lot happening. Hay muchas cosas que están sucediendo. We need the Lord in our lives to fight. Everything that is coming against us. Estamos peleando contra fuerzas sobrenaturales. We are fighting supernatural forces that are attacking, that are on the earth, that are attacking the church, that are attacking our children and our lives. Estamos peleando fuerzas sobrenaturales que están peleando contra nuestra familia, contra nuestros hijos, contra la iglesia. He stands at the door and the Bible says he knocks. And the Bible says if anyone hears his voice, si alguien oye su voz, si alguien oye mi voz, how can it be that you're so busy? Estás tan ocupado? Are you so busy with your life? Are you so entangled? Estamos tan enredados que no podemos oír la voz de Dios que toca? He wants to come into your life. And the thing I notice about the scripture, y lo que me doy cuenta de la escritura, Brother George, is that he don't barge in. He has the power to do it. Él tiene poder de decir, man, I'm coming in whether you like it or not. But the Lord is a gentleman. Tiene gentileza. Se para y hace la invitación. He makes the invitation. He knocks on doors. He's polite. He wants to see who will take the opportunity to open the door and allow God to come into their lives. Él está esperando que alguien abra la puerta para dejarlo y permitirlo para que le entre. Y el problema con nosotros es que we come to church, venimos a la iglesia, we hear the word all the time, and even though we're in church, a lot of times Jesus Christ is not part of our homes. Jesucristo no es parte de nuestro hogar. And he keeps inviting you, te sigue invitando, but with your, with your busy schedule, with your busy entangled life, you keep listening to other things and you don't listen to the voice of the Lord. No estás oyendo la voz de Dios. That's why sometimes people can come into the house of the Lord and they say, man, I got it, I hear it. Eh? Somebody that decided to open the door and allowed him to come in and how the changes start happening all the way. And then you got people that come into church 15, 20 years. They're still sitting there and they still can't hear. Well, they got their doors closed. Right. Hay personas que entran a la iglesia, hermano, y de repente oyen la voz del Señor y abren su puerta y empiezan a tener esa relación con el Señor. Y hay personas que están 15, 20 años en la iglesia y todavía no abren nada. You're one way here and another way out there. But regardless... The Bible says that he will knock on the door if anybody opens it. What does the Bible say? ¿Qué dice la palabra de Dios? Que si abren abre la puerta, ¿qué va a hacer él? The Bible says, I will come in to him. Dice que yo entraré a él. ¿Eh? He's talking about a door, and then he changes to say that he's a him. ¿Eh? So the door is a him. ¿Es una puerta o es a él? Because he's talking about the human. Está hablando de la persona humana. And we're thinking, we're thinking of physical doors. Estamos hablando de una puerta física. But in reality, he wants to come into each one of our lives. Él quiere entrar a nuestra vida. Él quiere entrar a ti, a él, a ella y a todos. He wants to come in and sup with him, with her, and with anybody that opens the door. He's standing at the door. He's calling on to the nations. Está llamando a las naciones. Is anybody going to stop listening to what they're listening to? Stop listening to all their voices in their minds, in their heart, and say, what does the word say? ¿Qué nos dice la palabra de Dios? What does the true word of the Lord say? Sister Joanna, we're not into organizations. I don't care about organizations. A mí no me importa lo que es una organización. Oh, I go to this church. I don't care about that. A mí no me importa que tú vayas a esa iglesia. 
What I care about is that you maintain yourself in the doctrine of Christ. A mí lo que me interesa es que te mantengas en Cristo. Because now you can get to the point and say, oh, I love Cornerstone. Don't love Cornerstone. Love Jesus Christ. No am as a Cornerstone. Cornerstone is a, a, a fictitious name that we came up with years ago. Don't fall in love with people. Fall in love with Jesus in people. No te enamores de la gente. Oh, no, is that I like that pastor, and I like that leader, and I like these brothers, and I like the way they sing. Well, what happens when those brothers and those leaders and the people are not there? Are not there? Se enamora de la persona, se enamora del lugar, se enamora de la música. ¿Y qué pasa cuando no hay la música que te gusta? What happens when there's not that music you like? And what happens when your favorite preacher, your predicador favorito tuyo no está ahí ese día? Do you still praise the Lord? ¿Tú todavía vas a alabar al Señor? You still say praise the Lord, amen to the word? You got to back up the word. Tú tienes que respaldar la palabra regardless of who is teaching it. You got to fall in love with Jesus so you're excited about the word and not excited about the one giving the word. Tienes que, hermano, ponerte, hermano, contento con la palabra, no quien está dando la palabra. The Bible tells us that we need to allow Jesus Christ to come into our lives because the God of this age... Tenemos que permitir que Dios entre en nuestra vida porque el Dios de esta temporada, de este tiempo, está acabando. He is doing a number out there. Go to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 4. Vamos a ir a 2 Corintios, capítulo 4, verso 4. And it's too early for me to start drinking water, but I should have drank it before. Don't fail me. Praise the Lord. Nobody heard that, right? The God of this world, that means the world in which we live in has a God. Dice que el Dios de este siglo significa que este mundo, este siglo tiene su Dios. And what has the God of this world done? He has blinded the minds of all of them which don't believe. Él está venido a cegar el entendimiento de los incrédulos. So tell me, when you deal with people that don't understand what you're giving them, you don't have to get bothered. No te tienes que molestar. You don't get mad at people that you're giving them the word and they reject it. No te vas a pelear con personas que van a rechazar esto. You have to have compassion and say, hold on a second. They're blinded because of the God of this world. Ellos están cegados por el Dios de este mundo. He has blinded them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Dice que el Dios de este siglo ha cegado el entendimiento de los incrédulos para que no le resplandezca la luz del evangelio. All right? So what does he do? What does the enemy do? ¿Qué hace el enemigo con nosotros? Why do we need to allow God to come into our lives? ¿Por qué tenemos que permitir que Dios entre en nuestra vida? Because we're dealing with supernatural forces that are more skilled than we are at warfare. Estamos peleando, hermano, contra un enemigo que tiene mucha más experiencia en la guerra que nosotros. And we think we're going to fight Satan, que tenemos que pelear a Satanás. Oh, bring him. Uh, you don't want to say bring him unless you got somebody to back you up. Eh? You see those... Those uh, things on YouTube where people start bullying people and they don't realize it. That person that's really soft at you, poking, you're poking. And so that one, uh, you go, oh, okay, I didn't know he had him in here. Yeah, just be careful who you're trying to push around unless you got somebody backing you up. Ten cuidado, hermano, con quién estás empujando y a quién estás clamando y diciéndole, ah, no, es que yo peleo contra el diablo. Hermano, el diablo te coge y te sacude y te, that will come and shake you up and spit you out. Why? ¿Por qué razón? Because the devil doesn't sleep. El, mira, el enemigo no duerme. El enemigo no solamente controla. He's not only controlling a third of the legion of angels. He's the, he's being, they're being governed by the God of this world. Están gobernado por el Dios de este siglo. So now you got the God of this world is blinding the people so that the light of Jesus Christ won't shine unto them. That's what the, the scripture tells us. Eso es lo que nos dice la escritura. He has blinded the minds of them which believe not. You just got to read it in, in a, read it in a non-NIV or a non-KJV version. Who has another version of that? We 
We're just living in times where nobody reads. Sad, right? We, we, we do TV, we do phones, we do internet, we do images, but we don't do reading. Few people sit back and read a book anymore. So our, le our level of reading comprehension is like, pff, out the door. El nivel de comprensión de leer, hermano, está afuera. People, are not being, people don't read anymore. I'm going to be able to sit and get the Bible and just sit back with a cool, cool, cool lemonade on a Sunday and just read. Nope. Doesn't happen. Not everybody. But put on a movie or put on something. You can sit there and watch for one or two hours very easily. It's just the way our society is, is, is going, right? So who has another, who has another version? Satan, who is the God of this world, he has blinded the minds of those which don't believe. They are unable to see. Why has he blinded them? So that they don't see the glorious light of the good news. So don't take it personal when you deal with somebody who's blinded. No, hermano, no lo tome personal. La persona está ciega. He can't see it. He can't understand it. It's so easy. Jesus loves you. Jesus can help you with your situation. Ah, and they keep on and they keep on. They're blinded. So what do you do? ¿Qué haces? You got to let the power of God work in their life. So tiene que dejar que poder de Dios trabaje en su vida. Go to the book of 2nd uh, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, not 2nd Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Look, look what the Bible says. Mira lo que dice la palabra. Everybody there? Yes. Todos están ahí? Yes. Where in time past you walked. All right, can I say I walked? Yes. I walked. We all walked, no? Right. How did we walk? How did you walk before? So don't think because somebody else is not walking the way you walk that all of a sudden you say, well, look at them. Look at them. Oh, man, we judge wherever. Look at them. You walk the same way. What are you talking about? Just because somebody doesn't dress like you now or somebody doesn't act like you now and someone doesn't talk like you now, don't look down on them because you walked the same way. Where in time past you walked, according to who? Who were you walking according to? You were walking according to the course of this world. In other words, the current of this world is what it means by course. You were walking according to a current that the world had. And we were just going along with the current. Dice, en los cuales anduviste en otro tiempo, siguiendo la corriente. ¿Por qué ahora vas a criticar a los que están en la corriente todavía si tú andabas en esa corriente? ¿Por qué no tienes paciencia y amor con los que están en la corriente? Why don't you have compassion with those that are caught in the current of the world? Because you were part of that current too. Tú eras parte de esa corriente. And what happened with you? What happened with your, with your current? Put a little paper there or something so you don't lose that scripture because I want you to go back to it. I don't want you to have to look for it again. Go to, uh, help me, Lord. I, I think it might be 1 Peter 4.4. I might be wrong. I'm going to tell you what you did with that current. I might be wrong. There's no 4.4. That's, 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 I'll tell you right now. There is? Yeah, that's it. Uh, First Peter four four. Okay, go to go to uh, go to uh, go to verse one real fast. Look at this. All right, go to verse one. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, what do you need to do? Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Dice, por puesto que Cristo ha padecido por nosotros en la carne, vosotros también armados del mismo pensamiento. Pues quien ha pecado o padecido en la carne, también dice, terminó con el pecado. Verse 2 says, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh. Okay? Para no vivir el tiempo que resta en la carne. Remember, you that lived according to the course of this world, you once lived. Tú vivías en la corriente, right? You no longer need to live the rest of your time caught in that current in the flesh to the lust of men to do the will of God so that you can't do the will of God. Para no vivir el tiempo que resta en la carne conforme a las concupiscencias de los hombres, sino conforme a la voluntad de Dios. No tienes que mantenerte en la corriente 
para que tú no sigas viviendo el tiempo que te queda en la carne conforme a las concupiscencias de los hombres, pero si no conforme a la voluntad de Dios. Then it says in verse 3, and we're getting to my point. For the time past of our life may suffer us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Basta ya el tiempo pasado para haber hecho lo que agrada a los gentiles. In other words, it's enough that you lived in the past according to the will of the Gentiles, people that didn't know God, when you used to walk in lasciviousness, in lust, in excess of wines, and revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. This is something we all did. Vivías antes en la lascivia, las concupiscencias, las embriagadeces, las orgías, disipación y abominable idolatrías. And now we get to the verse I wanted, verse 4. Wherein they think it, it is strange that you, say me, thank you, Brother Nigel, run not with them, who is them? The world, the ones that are caught in the current. ¿Quién son ellos? Los que todavía están en la corriente. A estos les parece cosa extraña que vosotros no corráis con ellos. They think it's strange that you are not running with them in the same current. All of a sudden you say, hold on, I'm talking something different. I'm living differently. I want my family to be different. Hold on, let's just look at what the word says. I mean, we've been running and talking about Jesus all our lives. But hold on a second. Look what the word says. Mira lo que dice la palabra. And all of a sudden, people... Think it's strange. La gente les parece cosa extraña. What's going on with you, Joan? ¿Qué te pasa, Almita? You been going to church now? Your whole family, everybody, the people that should be happy for you, all of a sudden turn against you and they, they start almost like no one's happy. Well, good, mom, that you're going. I would imagine, I don't know how it is in your house, but if it's normal and everybody's out, what are they doing over there? What are they brainwashing you over there? Oh, Lord. Because before they had it out with Bishop. Then after they had it out with Bishop, now they have it out with me. And pretty soon they'll have it out with Nigel, they'll have it out with Felix. They're not fighting against us, they're fighting against God. Right. At, the end of our day, at the end of the day, people fight against God. They will always find the reason to blame somebody else. Siempre van a buscar la manera de culpar a otra persona. And now they think it's strange that you do not run at the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. A esto le parece cosa extraña que vosotros no corráis con ellos en el mismo desenfreno de desilusión. You do not run with them to the, that's why they think it's strange that you're not running with them to the same excess of riot that everybody else is involved in. So everybody's in the current and you decided to hold yourself back. Tú te mantuviste para atrás y dices, no, yo no voy a correr en esa corriente. All right, now go back to uh, Ephesians, right? Ephesians 2.2, Ephesians 2.2. You walked according to the course of the world. Who were you running according to? ¿A quién, a quién estabas corriendo? Prince. Conforme a quién? Who was the role model? Who is the one that is governing the ages now? ¿Quién está gobernando este tiempo? To the It's the same one that was cast out of hell. Listen, he was cast out of heaven onto earth, and not only him, but a third of the legion of angels follow. Mira, una tercera, he deceived a third of the angels engañó a una tercera parte de los ángeles. So you're not dealing with just anybody. Tú no estás tratando con cualquiera. You're dealing with a master deceiver. Estás hablando de una, de un, de una creación, hermano, que es un engañador. He's an accuser of the brethren. Es un acusador de los hermanos. He is the father of lies. Es el padre de la mentira. He is the deceiver. Es el engañador. He works with deception, with schemes, Strategies and stratagems. He works with everything. Él está hablando con, estratege con estratagemas. Está hablando con estrat He will work a something in your life so that you no longer serve God. Para que tú no sirvas a Dios. Amen. He will find a way to get into the church. You know what I say? You know what I say, hermano? Que el diablo permite que la gente inconvierta se conviertan a la, a la iglesia. That, that, that the devil allows people to get converted to Jesus. But just enough to come into church to cause disruption. Think about that for a moment. Piensa en eso por un momento. People think that everything's on the outside. Tú crees que el diablo solamente está afuera. But you don't understand that God will allow people, or really the enemy, will allow people, get enough understanding, get enough just to maintain yourself on the surface, but you are going to be there, but you're going to be a stumbling block. Vas a ser una piedra de tropiezo en la iglesia. So I can preach. Yo puedo estar predicando, and then you got somebody in the background saying, I don't think that's true. 
He's in church. Está la iglesia. They walk out of church. Instead of calling everybody and saying, man, that was a great message. They say, you know what? I don't know about Pastor John. They're in church. And we almost become like uh, spies or we become for, for the enemy. Somos utilizados como espía para el enemigo. So you have to recognize this. Tú tienes que reconocer que el diablo anda en medio de nosotros. He will be in the midst of us. Didn't the Lord have 12 and one of them was wrong? No tuvo 12 y había en el medio uno que estaba. Well, it's not going to change. Eso no va a cambiar. Because you see, we know enough to not mingle with those outside. Oh, man, you know what? Yeah, yeah, we love you, but we don't mingle because we know that we're righteous and we're trying to do what's right. But we don't realize that right around us, en lo que nos rodea, siempre hay la artimaña del enemigo. He wants to set you up with a trap. Él quiere buscar una trampa para que caigas. Look what the word says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wow of the devil. Okay, so let me ask you this. If I was to kind of change it up a little bit, the scripture, and I was to say, don't put on everything. Just put on some of the armor. Would you still be able to accomplish the same purpose? No. So, so the word is already warning us what we need to do. In order to survive. Ya la palabra nos deja saber qué tenemos que hacer para sobrevivir esto. So, he's already giving us the inclination to say, listen, put on the whole armor of God. Because that's the only possible way that you are going to be able to stand against the enemy. De la única manera que tú te puedes mantener firme. I'm not talking about stand before the enemy and fall. He wants you to remain standing. Él quiere que tú te mantengas firme. When you stand, cuando una persona dice que está parado, no está hablando de que estás así. We're not talking about that the person standing up. We're talking about firmness. We're talking about somebody that's steadfast, someone that's not moving, that's someone that is getting attacked by the enemy, but he's still there. He still comes to church. He's still fighting the good fight. The enemy doesn't want you to keep on fighting. He wants you to give up. Él quiere que tú te dejes por vencer. I'm going through so much. I'm not standing firm anymore. Ya yo no me paro. I don't know, man. And we always say the same thing, brother Lemuel. Man, I don't understand why I serve God. I, I do everything I can for God. I do this for God. I do this. And look at all these things that happened to me in my life. We always have a tendency of throwing that back at God. Yo hago todo para Dios. Yo doy and I give my offerings and I'm bringing. And I don't understand why God doesn't bless me like he blesses others. I've heard that countless times in 30 years. And we always have a tendency of blaming somebody. Siempre queremos have a culpar. In this case, we blame God. Oh, well, I'm not, you know what? I have nothing to do with church because this is what's happening when I'm in church. We don't blame Satan. We don't, we don't blame ourselves. We don't look in the mirror and say, what did I do? We blame everything and everybody. And this starts, yes, it could be your fault. Maybe it is your fault. But always, I can look at what I contributed. What did I do wrong? What am I doing? Am I getting really, am I putting on the full armor of God? Or have I allowed Satan to come into my family, into my life, and I didn't do it? I have to blame myself. Yo tengo que culparme, ¿verdad? The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God so that you may able to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ponte la armadura de Dios para que puedas estar firme contra las acechanzas del diablo. And we ask ourselves, what are wiles? Que son acechanzas. And I'll tell you real quickly, it is deception through trickery. They're false impressions. Que lo que significa eh, acechanza es una amenaza oculta o disimulada para perjudicar a alguien. So think about that for a moment. Piensa en esto por un momentico. That the enemy works in your lives through deception. El enemigo viene a trabajar en tu vida por el engaño oculto o disimulada. He's not going to be obvious. And no lo va a ser obviamente, because then you say, that's the devil. He wants to make it look like it could be God. It could be this. It could be that. Because then he wants to, de he wants to deceive you. Él te quiere engañar. Amen. So the only way you can stand firm and remain standing in God year after year 
De la única manera que te vas a mantener firme y decir, wow, he's been in church for 10 years, he's been in church 15 years. Said, you know how many times he has fought the deception of the enemy? Tú sabes cuántos, para una persona estar en la iglesia 20, 25, 30 años y está peleando todavía. Devil has tried to deceive him so many times, but we are not ignorant to Satan's devices. Pero no somos ignorantes a las artimañas de Satanás. I recognize that Satan. I recognize that Satan. Eso es Satanás. I blame it. On who deserves to be blamed, which is Satan. Right. Satan will come to try to destroy us. God will try to unite us. Dios nos trata de unir y el enemigo nos trata de dividir. Right. So you got to recognize that it's very easy. When anybody comes in and tries to divide, anybody wants to speak against a brother, anybody wants to do this, you know that it's not God. Right. Si alguien viene y quiere hablar más de un hermano, quiere hablar de una hermana, quiere hacer esto, quiere dividir, ya nos reconocemos que eso no es de Dios. Dios une. El amor de Dios une, ¿no? Amen. The Bible says, put on the whole armor so that you can stand, that you can maintain firm against all the trickery and deceit of the devil that's coming your, to your life. Verse 12 says, for our battle, our wrestling, our tug of war, our back and forth every single day, is not against people. Nuestro, nuestra lucha diaria no es contra las personas. Why do, we, why do we take things so personal? ¿Por qué lo tomamos tan personal? I don't have an issue with you. Yo no tengo un problema contigo. I have it with Satan. Yo lo tengo con Satanás. Amen. You're just the person I look at, so I have a tendency of blaming you. That's why it's so hard that if you ever do something to me, and you say, brother, forgive me. I can't forgive you. No te puedo perdonar because I see him, right? But if I realize that it wasn't Felix that did it, it was, he was deceived into doing what he did and he asked for forgiveness, then my love for Felix will say, you know what? It's not him. It's he's deceived. Él estaba engañado. That's why people do the things they do. You think they're just, oh, man, I just like to do bad things. People are influenced. Son influ La influencia viene del el enemigo. That's why a mother can take their kids and jump into a lake and drown all three of them. You would say, man, that lady must have been crazy. No. She didn't have to be crazy. She could have been abused. She could have had all these demonic influence in her life to say, I am a nobody. Nobody loves me. My husband's got to laugh at me. I'm taking every. You think you're not capable. If you all think you're not capable of something crazy, how did he just shoot the other guy? Man, he was. So you never been in a car and all of a sudden got into an argument? And Brother Lemuel, your blood just went up to the top of your head and just, and you say, what am I doing? Eh? <laughs> you say, I want to get that car and ram it on him, right? <laughs> and if you're not prayerful, if you didn't wake up prayerful that day and you're not reading and you're not listening to hymns and, you know, you're out there and it's constant, you're getting stressed. You're getting stressed from here. You're fighting at home. You're listening to rock music. You're, all this stuff is going to influence you to get your car and ram it against that person. These are the tricks of the devil. Estos son los, tri los trucos del enemigo. Que una persona dice, ¿cómo una madre puede cobrar a sus hijos y matarlos? O puede hacer esto, puede hacer esto. ¿Tú no crees que la influencia del enemigo, el Dios de este siglo, no está trayendo influencia al mundo? And then our children, nuestros hijos están siendo programados. They're being programmed. And you say, well, how are they being programmed? Not for nothing, but a lot of times, the same video games, los mismos juegos esos de video, where you got people killing people, people killing people, people killing people, and they're seeing the vivid images of, you know. I used to tell Danny, <coughs> even when he played all uh, those war games, I said, I don't care that they're Nazis, and you want to kill Nazis. I don't care that they're Russian. I don't care about that. that kill aliens. Kill something that's fake. I don't want you to kill another human being. Because you get desensitized into thinking that's normal. Tú te piensas que es una cosa normal. And all of a sudden, the horror and seeing someone else die starts to wash away. And our society now has no respect human for humans. Ya la, la sociedad que vivimos nosotros no tiene respeto a la humanidad por la humanidad. Life doesn't have any, no tiene ningún valor. So you got a little kid, what? Well, they'll shoot somebody. They don't care. Who do you think it is? ¿De quién tú crees que es? The God of this world, el Dios de este mundo, que ha traído una influencia sobre ellos. Yes. And you say, poor children, they didn't have a father. The kids don't have a father. And these kids are on the street don't have a father. And it's a cycle. Oh, I don't know about that because I didn't have a father. And I went to Harvard. Thank God for you. You're one of the few that did. 
Statistically, you don't have a father, you don't have a good role model, you're going to get in trouble. I'm sorry, that's just a reality. La gente dice, no, que yo, tu, yo no tuve padre, yo fui a Harvard y estudié, yo, I didn't want to be like my dad. Well, praise the Lord, gloria a Dios. Amen. Pero la mayoría de las personas no tienen esa, las estadísticas te muestran que si tu padre no estaba ahí, y tu padre te maltrató, y tu padre eso, vas a criar. Vas a repetir los ciclos muchas veces. Amen. Solamente Dios puede venir y cambiarte el modo de pensar para decir, no voy a ser como mi papá, no voy a tratar a mis hijos de esa manera, no voy a tratar a mi esposa de esa manera. Es lo único que yo miré, es la única I saw. So I'm going to repeat it. How my dad treated my mom, well, I'll just treat the same. No, God steps in and says, no, renew your mind, renueva tu mente. Respect, love, take care. And then all of a sudden, everything starts changing, not because of the worldly influence, it's because of the godly influence that you're getting. La influencia de Dios que estás recibiendo por medio de las enseñanzas. So that you become more Christ-like in your actions. The Bible tells us in the next verse, right? No, I'm sorry. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but what do we wrestle against? It's not against people. No es contra la persona. Don't take it personal. We wrestle against something that's higher. Estamos peleando contra algo más alto. Now, if you want to fight against something that's higher, you need to have something higher in your life. Don't think that you can fight it. You're fighting against principalities and powers. You're fighting against rulers of the darkness of this world. And meditate for a moment that this world has rulers of darkness. Hay gobernadores de, mira, dice, gobernadores de las tinieblas de este siglo. Significa que no hay solamente uno, they're just one. Talk about a third of the legion of angels, that's a lot. And I'll remember this. Y recuérdense una cosa. How is, what are the attributes that God has? He's omnipresent, omniscient, right? Omnipotent, omnipotent, omnipotent. Okay, so Dios es todo poderoso, Dios es todo consciente, Dios está en todo lugar, omnipresente. Angels aren't like that. Los ángeles no son así. Angels travel very fast, but they're not like God. No son como Dios. God knows what you're thinking all the time. Devils don't know what you're thinking all the time. Los diablos no saben lo que tú estás pensando. But you know what the devils do do? Thank you for all the mature people. Thank you for not laughing. <laughs> what do the devils do? They listen. ¿Qué hacen los diablos? Oyen. And then the devils, the angelic beings, have a very a fast way of traveling. Tiene una manera muy rápida de correr. So they're everywhere. And they surround us. That's why it says the angel or the host of the Lord encamp around those that fear him. So there's angelic hosts, angeles, que nos rodean. And the Bible even says that the angels are here to what? Be servants to them that serve God. So, so God has a legion of angels to serve us. And then you say, something's happening. So how did that happen? God helped me. Yes, God helped you through an angel. You just know, don't know about it. Many have, uh, mira, muchos han entretenido a los ángeles sin darse cuenta. Many have entertained angels and not even realized it. Could be somebody you, may, you have no idea. All right, so we talk about the mysteries, right? Estamos hablando de misterios. Well, we talk about angelic beings that are all around us. Estamos hablando de una tercera de los ángeles que están engañados and they work for Satan. They know their end. Ya saben su fin. So what do they do? ¿Qué es lo que van a hacer? They're going to deceive the nations. Van a querer engañar a las naciones. So your mind has to be uh, awoken to realize, wait a minute, my battle is with these. Mi batalla está contra ellos. When I come in, I'm guarding me, my family, and the people that surround me because all these spirits, todos los espíritus, quieren atacarme a mí. Dime con quién andas y te diré quién eres. That's a very famous Cuban saying or Puerto Rican saying or Spanish saying. Tell me who you hang out with and I'll tell you who you are. Tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Okay. Start hanging out with good influence, and then watch your character turn into a good character. What does the Bible say? It says, uh, says uh, bad, uh, bad company, uh, uh, first, uh, first Corinthians 15.33. Yes. Well, the scripture, I just don't quite even quote it, right? So what does it say? Bad company corrupts good manners. ¿Qué hace la mal compañía? Evil communications, Evil communications 
People that hang out, you hang out with people, you think that your lifestyle is not going to change? You don't think you'll be corrupted by what you listen to and the people you hang out with? For you realize that you hang out with some influences that are not godly, and you start talking like them. Matthew, uh, do me your homework. What, bro? Uh, so did he call us bro? Where'd you learn that, Matthew? Oh, I learned this from so-and-so. And then you take them to school, and then you got all the other beautiful little children influencing our children. And you're doing your part to try to keep them all naive and simple and godly and pray for their food and pray for this. And then you got all the other parents' influence on their children that don't want nothing to do with God. And then you surround them with your children, and they're feeding them the voices. Right. And you think we can make it without God? ¿Tú crees que vamos a poder hacerlo sin Dios? I'm sorry for those that go to school. Hey, just look at schools where, hey, modern invention. Send everybody to school. Hey, used to be done at home. Then all of a sudden they say, you know, we'll do it from the church house. And then from the church house, and went into buildings, and then technology. And then before you realize that we put our children into a, an ambience of eight, nine hours of babysitting, being influenced. And then we say, oh, but your kids are going to be so maladjusted if you don't take them to school. They won't be socialized. Socialized to what? What do you want to mix with? What do you want to mix with? You, you, is that what you want? Hey, you have the right. You have the right to do it. And this is not a homeschool advocate uh, a Bible study. What I'm saying is that we don't realize that in the times we're living, everything is aimed is to destroy our families. Todo lo que está sucediendo ahora es para destruir a nuestras familias. So just thank the Lord. If you still got your little group together, thank the Lord. Huddle up and keep them together as long as you can. Because the enemy is out for us. El enemigo nos quiere. And if you don't have God in your life, if you don't submit to God and resist the devil, he'll never flee from you. He's always going to be around you. Si no te sometes a Dios y resistes al diablo, nunca vas a poder, hermano, resistir al diablo si no te sometes a Dios. All right, go back to that scripture, please. Thank you for going there. We were Ephesians. All right, so now we are dealing with the rulers of darkness of this world, and we're dealing against spiritual wickedness, which is in high places. Estamos hablando contra los gobernadores de las tinieblas de este siglo, contra huestes espirituales de maldad en las regiones celestes. I know people will critique what I'm saying. Yo sé que la gente va a criticar. Well, you know, we don't have the luxury. No tenemos, hermano, esa habilidad de hacer eso. We would love to teach our children, y me gustaría... You know that we make up excuses for everything. Nosotros hacemos excusas para todo. You know that? And we self-justify when we don't want to do something. We blame it on everything that why we can't. You can do whatever you want to do. Tú puedes hacer lo que te da la gana. People say, I don't know how he makes it to church. You don't even have a car. When you want to make it to church, you don't need no ride. And I, and I say to everybody who gets a ride, I'm not saying it for you. I'm saying it that we... Really, we'll find a way to get everywhere in life. And you say, man, how does that brother make it? He rides a bicycle. Well, you, who was it that told me? Was it you that told me that you used to ride a bicycle to, to, to the place you were going to? Because you wanted to get there, right? Okay. Thank God that we have each other now, and I wouldn't want nobody to do that. So if I find that anybody's riding a bicycle, I want to get mad. We, we will get you. We want to go pick you up. We offer it. That's fine. But what I'm saying is that we always find reasons and excuses. Oh, I didn't go because I have nothing to wear. Man, you, have, you have food for everything. You have clothes for everywhere. You have money for everything. You have a way to get around everywhere. Amen. You go to the store. You go to the mall. You go, but when it comes to church, all of a sudden, we can't make it to church. We don't have clothing for church. Listen, you have an excuse. So if you want to go ahead and criticize that, that's fine. It's the word. Verse 13 says, look, wherefore, since you have all this battle, since you're battling this kind of enemy, this is the reason wherefore you need. Porque estás peleando contra estos huestes espirituales. Dice, por tanto, entonces, tienes que hacer algo. You need to do something. You need to take the whole armor of God so that you're able to withstand in the evil day. ¿Para qué razón vas a, a, a tomar toda la madura? Porque ya tú sabes con quién tú peleas y tú puedas resistir en el día malo. Now, now meditate on this for a, a moment, everybody. We're not going to be here too long. Look at that word withstand. 
Mira la palabra resistir. The enemy wants to get each and every one of us through separate events. And the evil day will come upon you sooner or later. Whether it be through sickness, whether it be through a family thing, whatever it may be that attacks you and your family. Lo que venga a atacar a tu familia. And what's the ultimate goal for the church today? ¿Cuál sería la meta? The best. The, the, what is it? Stand. To stand. I'm not saying that you're going to, oh, my God, it's so glorious. Being, no, no, no. God wants to empower you so that you can stay firm in your journey here on earth. You, you got a certain amount of time to make it from point A to D. Whether it be 100 years, whether it be 70 years, whether it be 80 years, but in, those, in that time frame of your journey, God wants to give you and empower you to remain standing until the end. Él quiere que tú te mantengas parado firme hasta el final. Sean 70, 100 años, lo que sea. In those 70 and 60 and 80 and 100 years, or whatever it is in life, talk to the older saints, perhaps. I don't have any older saints in here. Mother Jones? She's laughing. She was just waiting. I wasn't going to look at me and Mother Jones. Javi's not. No. No. You tell me, Mother Jones, if I was to ask Mother Jones what she's been through in her life with this and this and that and children and this and that. You go back and forth, you say, life will take you through a journey. La vida todavía por algo nada. She's still standing. She still has a victory. Still, still pressing her way. It's like what I was saying about, about Maria. Estaba hablando lo mismo Maria. Que Maria, en, los, en el en poco tiempo, porque tú no eres una señora en tus 40, en tu, tu, tienes 30 y pico, 40 años aquí en la vida. Cállate. Y más, hermana, <laughs> dice hermana, ¿cuántas cosas tú no has pasado en un poco de tiempo aquí en la tierra? ¿No? Y entonces, lo único que tú has podido hacer no es decir, oh, tengo fuerza para cantar. Blah, blah, blah. No, de mantenerte firme. Y lo que Dios quiere es que tú puedas resistir en ese día malo. ¿Y cuántos días tú no has resistido? How many days has she not resisted? Mother Jones, how many days have you not resisted? How many days have people that have been in God have not resisted and they're saying, we've been through it, we weathered the storm, and I'm still standing. Stop, yeah. I'm still standing better than I ever have. Standing like a true believer. Come on. Take it Maybe it's a Christian song. I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like a Christian song. It's standing like a true believer. You're standing. You're there. You're pressing your way. What have you, you haven't been through anything, Pastor John? You haven't been through anything, Brother Knight? You, Felix, you haven't done it, gone through anything? And you're like, Yes. Wow, you don't look like it. You look like you're happy. You look like you're still going. Bishop, he hasn't gone through anything. Sister Lisa, I haven't gone through anything. And they're still pressing and still pressing and still pressing and still pressing. And instead of saying, man, let me look at the people that are still pressing. Let me look at the example of people that are still resisting. Déjame mirar el ejemplo de aquellos hermanos que todavía están resistiendo en el día malo. Cosas suceden y se mantienen. Do you don't think that God allows for things to happen as an example to you? Para que cosas sucedan, para que tenga un ejemplo para ti. You say, I've been through something bad, but you know what? It's going to be an example for you. If Brother Nigel went through that, if Bishop went through that, if Brother Francisco went through that, Brother Lemieux went through that, and they're still standing, I have hope. Yo tengo esperanza. Amen. What I'm going through ain't nothing. No es nada. God knows what you're able to tolerate. El sabe lo que tú puedes. He will not give you a temptation that will wipe you out. He might take you to the line. He might take you to the border. About to get, you, you might have everybody around you about to say, I'm done. And you say, no, I, I'm right above the water. I'm going through this. And before you realize that the water starts to subside, and you go, it's just a storm. It's una tormenta mala. Woo! And then you don't have one anymore. And then you see some other people that are having the storm. And now you're able to have compassion on people that are going through. Ahora tú tienes compasión. Y puedes ayudar porque Dios ha dado la fuerza para sobrevivir tu tentación y tu tormenta. Y ahora puedes ayudar a otro. The Bible says that after you put on the armor that you're able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Para que puedas resistir en el día malo y habiendo acabado todo, estás firme todavía. That's what God wants. He wants you to be firm. Now keep on to verse... 14. Stand therefore, 
having your loins girt about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness. All right, keep on. 15. He's talking about all the armament. I'm not going to go through all the pieces of it. We'll do that in another study. Deacon Javi's done it multiple times. Go ahead. Feet shod with a preparation. Okay, no, we can read them, but we don't have to. Your feet shod with a preparation of the gospel of peace. Calzada los pies con el apresto del evangelio de pies. All right, you're ready to go. Verse 16. Above all. Above all. Above everything that you put on. Because the whole armor is necessary. La armadura completa es necesaria. But above all the stuff you're going to put on, please don't forget your faith. Don't forget to have faith. You've got to have faith. That's how righteous people will walk. Wherewith, with that shield of faith, with your faith, you're able to turn off a lot. And one of the main strategies of the devil is to throw thoughts into you so that your mind just goes off into a million places. Dice, sobre todo, tomar el escudo. Si vas a ponerte toda la armadura, por favor, hermano, no se olviden el escudo de la fe. Porque con esa fe es lo que puedes apagar los dardos del fuego del maligno. Y el enemigo tiene la tendencia. Just like the Roman soldiers used to get, uh, where they fight, en la guerra, they used to fight with their darts and they would light them up with oil. And if you see those movies like Gladiator and all that, and you see the fire, because that's how it is. It, it hits you. And unless your, your shield is quenched in water, Darts can come in, and then before you realize it, you're all on fire. How easily a thought comes into your mind. Que rápido, hermano. Entra un pensamiento, un dardo, y lo dejas un momentico. Just let it. Pa! All right. That was no big, uh, before you realize it. Cuando vienes a ver, y estás pensando, and you're worried about it. And you, that little thing, what great destruction a little fire causes. Cuanto, hermano, que clase de destrucción causa un poquito de fuego. Solamente porque no lo apagaste. All because you didn't turn it off. All because you didn't have your shield of faith to be able to quench it, to turn it off. No, I received that thought. I received that saying, but I'm going to keep on in the name of the Lord. God is my victory. Listen, I got God on my side. Bing. Right back to you. You're sick. You're not going to get better. Estás enfermo. That, that's a dart? Oh, that's a thank you saying for the while. Bing. Right back to you. Hey. Eh? What's going to happen, it'll just go, and it'll go, No, brother, in our case, en el caso de nosotros no hace, y se apaga. No, en el caso de nosotros viene, You're calling everybody. Estás llamando a todo el mundo. Oh, Lord Jesus. Me dijo el doctor eso. Oh, look at the doctor says. And before you realize it, everybody's on fire. Y la gente, todo alrededor de ti está en fuego. The whole forest, Everybody. But you meet somebody with faith, te encuentras con alguien con fe, and they say, hold on a second, what? They told you that? That ain't nothing. God can do it. Oh, all of a sudden, turned it off. Lo apagaste rapidito. Man, you can keep on the rest of your day happy. Ahora tienes el día feliz. You're going to ruin your day with that? Tú ibas a dejar que ese te arruinara tu día? All right, what does it say, verse 17? Take the helmet of salvation and the sword, the sword of the spirit. I'm only saying it out loud because sometimes you can't hear it from over there. I've been told. You should have a microphone. Which is the what? Tomar el yemo de la salvación y la espada del espíritu, que es la palabra de Dios. And then it says in verse 18. No, that's it. End it there. All right. All right. I'm going to tell you really fast so you can all leave. I've got a little bit of time. I want to tell you something very quickly that the enemy uses. Yo te voy a dar algo rapidito, hermano, para que se puedan llevar con ustedes. I want you to take this with you, okay? Some of the ways that Satan uh, wants to attack you, de cierta manera que el diablo te quiere, and things, things you need to watch for, ciertas cosas que tienes que mirar. Satan likes to exaggerate the pleasures of sin. El, el, el enemigo siempre quiere exagerar el placer del pecado. He wants to minimize the outcome of sin. Y quiere siempre tratar de minima, minimizar Diminuir el, lo que es la consecuencia del pecado. Okay? And the result of it, y el resultado. He wants you to fall into it, maximize the pleasure in your mind, and minimize the outcome. That's why I say, oh, I'll do it. What the heck? Well, that's a little, yeah, I'm just drinking. Well, it's not a big deal. I'll get. Before you realize it, you get into a car accident, you're drunk, you just kill three people. That part was hid from you. Esa parte fue escondida. The only thing you were thinking, I'm having a good time. 
maximizing the pleasure. Okay? Go to the book of Hebrews. Hebreos capítulo 11, verso 24. Hebrews 11, 24. And verse 25. Just got to consider the consequences. Tenemos que considerar las consecuencias, okay? It says, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, in other words, as he got older, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Por la fe, Moisés, hecho ya grande, rehusó llamarse el hijo de la hija del faraón. He got to a point in his life where he said, you know what? I know the consequences. I know where I need to be. I know what's right and what's wrong. Yo sé lo que está correcto y lo que no está correcto. Rehusó llamarse hijo de la hija del faraón. And what did he do? Verse 25. He chose, he made, he chose good decisions. Escogió cosas correctas. It's all about choosing, choose correctly. Chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the what? The pleasures of sin. So sin is pleasurable because sin gratifies the flesh. Los deleites temporales vienen, mira, a agradar a la carne. That's why it's so easy for us to fall into sin. But you got to make a conscious choice to say, no, I will choose to suffer. I will not. I will not go. I will not say that. I will not I'll be a part of that. Yes, I'll be the outcast. I'll be separate from everybody. I don't mind, but I'm going to do what's right. I choose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin, which the Bible says is only for a season. Solamente, la, mira, los deleites temporales es por, son temporales. Los deleites, hermano, nos gozamos por un tiempo temporal. Amen. Sin darnos cuenta, hermano, pero la consecuencia es para sí. And I always use the same example. Yeah, you, have, you had a good time in the back of the car. Mm -hmm. And now you're dealing with the consequences for all your life. Because of what, was, what came out of that that joyous moment. You imagine? Something that lasts for moments and then all of a sudden can affect you for all your life? Eh? You think when somebody shoots somebody, it's just a moment of anger. Bah, you can't take it back. Their life is gone. Now your pain, your family's pain, everybody's pain for the rest of your life, for a momentary moment, for a momentico, hermano, de una indiscreción, algo que hiciste mal, and you don't realize the importance of individual decisions. In a moment, your life changes. En un momento, tu vida cambia. And I always say, life works in moments. La vida trabaja en momentos. Everything changes in a moment, right? We've preached that before. Married people, you were single, but a moment later, you're engaged. You had three babies, now you have four. They all changed in a moment. You had a job, in a moment you were fired. In another moment you were rehired by somebody else at a higher pay. See how things change in moments? Eh? We live. So don't dwell on your moment. No te fijes por tu momento. Moments are moments. It's momentary. Hey, look at the bigger picture. Mira la, la escena más grande. And sometimes bad moments bring good things. Yes, yes, yes. Y algunas veces los malos momentos están preparándote para algo bueno. You lost your job, it looked like a bad thing. But man, you didn't realize what was around the corner. You were going to get a pay that was twice as much. Yeah. Why do you always think that everything that bad is happening in your life is not working for your favor? ¿Por qué tú piensas que todo lo que está trabajando en tu vida siempre es malo? Are you so negative? Uh, are you so negative that everything that happens is bad? Getting fired might not be bad. Do you think persecution was bad? ¿Tú crees que la persecución era mala? How many say that persecution was bad? Raise your hand. Raise them. You don't have to raise them if you don't want to. I'm just saying raise them. Well, let me tell you. Persecution was bad because they were going against Christ, right? But the Lord allowed persecution to come onto the saints because if they wouldn't have been persecuted in Jerusalem, then the gospel would have never been shed throughout all the nations. So he allowed it. They were all cuddled together. They were all comfortable. They were all there. Okay. Persecution comes in, and it causes you to get off of your behind. It causes you to have some action behind it. And sometimes unless things happen in your life, and unless your foundations are shaken up a little bit, y algunas veces si la fundación de tu vida no se sacude un poquito, poquito no haces nada, te quedas cómodo. Entonces Dios permite que las cosas malas sucedan. He will allow bad things to happen to kind of revive in us. 
para que nos aviva a todos. We get closer to him. Remember that. All right. We're almost over. Uh, people. You got to be careful with people that are around you. Tenemos que tener cuidado con las personas que nos rodean. Okay? The devil, the enemy, will always use people to take us through a bad place. El diablo siempre va a poder usar. Mira, el diablo usa personas para llevarnos por lugares malos. Go to the book of, go to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 5. Segunda de Timoteo, 3, verso 5. Everybody should have it there. God bless you, brother. All right. Who has it? Having a form of godliness. Having a form of godliness. Yeah. But denying the power thereof. People will be the ones to influence you into doing good or bad. And like I was saying before, and it's a secret that's been manifest. Not everybody in church, not everybody that's around you, not everybody that's in your life is there to help you. Okay? And like I always say, you will just get enough converted to come into church and be there, but you're always going to be a stumbling block for everybody around you. So that people can say, I don't want nothing to do with church. Man, to go to that church? Why do you think there's so many people in a church? Why do you think the people are so damaged by the church? It's not, they're not blaming the devil. Ellos no están culpando al diablo. Están culpando a las mismas gente que el diablo ha permitido entrar en la iglesia, convertirse un poquito, y ahora están ahí como, mira, tropiezo para todo el mundo. Siempre tirando cizaña, tirando comentarios. No dicen nada. El pastor dice, vamos a orar hoy a las cuatro de la mañana. Y dice, pero ¿para qué a las cuatro de la mañana? Si para qué, you're going to wake up at four in the morning. Why doesn't he wake up at four in the morning? I don't see his wife waking up at four in the morning. You know, a su esposa levantarse a las cuatro de la mañana. Always throwing the little comments. And then us, instead of standing up, we're going to say, hey, if you have a problem, why don't you say it to the person? Porque no se lo dice a la persona. You have a problem with Brother George, bring it out. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. They have a form of godliness. They look it, parece, hermano, tiene una apariencia de piedad, but denying the power thereof. Pero, hermano, negarán la eficacia de ella. You only look the part. You sound the part. You talk a lot about Acts 2.38 and repentance and baptism. You have a form of godliness, but you turn. Mira, but you deny the power of God in reality. The Bible says from such people do what? Turn away. Pero negarán la eficacia de ella. Now look what the Bible says. Go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 17. Mateo 10, 17. We already know that evil communications corrupt good manners. So if you, you, the people that you hang out with, the people that are around you, Just uh, be attentive to the things they're telling you. Make sure it's in the Bible. Make sure it's scripture. Show me in the Bible. Yeah, I love you. Yeah, you're a great teacher, but show me in the Bible. Because a lot of people, we just get so in love with man, and we get so in love with the church, and we get so in love. I don't care about the church and about the man. I care about Jesus Christ. I care about the word. The church of Jesus Christ I care about. The building you're in, this is just four walls that anybody can build. And they're like this, they're everywhere. Go in Miami right now, and there's a hundred million of these everywhere. What I care about is the word. What does the word say? I don't care what your pastor says. I love you and I love your pastor. What does the word say? Oh, my pastor thinks, I don't care what you think. I care about what the word says. Give me Bible, right? Beware of who? Men. That's it. Beware of men. For they will deliver you up to the councils. They will scourge you in the synagogues. Dice guardado los hombres. And at the end of the day, our battle is spiritual wickedness in high places. Governors of wickedness. Los huestes espirituales, gobernadores de este siglo. That's who wants to deceive you. That's the one that wants to trick your mind so you don't want nothing to do with church. And if you can allow people to come into church and mess you up before you realize it, you say, man, I got nowhere to go. In the world I'm lost and in the church I'm lost. I got nowhere. I ain't going to church, Brother George. Para que estará la iglesia? Pastor and his family are worse than the people out there. And then people say, man, I give up on church. I quit. They go back to doing their thing. We don't want to get to that point, everybody. Amen. You all agree? Amen. Go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 12. The devil is a master of presenting sin in a very attractive way, okay? Just keep that in mind. Take heed, brethren, lest any of you have an evil heart of unbelief. All of a sudden, you were in church and everything was fine, but the evil day came. You didn't have your whole armor on. 
You got deceived, and now you've departed from the living God. Mirad, hermanos, que no haya ninguno de vosotros un corazón malo de incredulidad para apartarse del Dios vivo. Estabas bien en la iglesia, sucedió un incidente, y ahora de repente ya no estás en la iglesia. And it says in verse 13, But what? Encourage, exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you become hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And that's how the enemy wants to get you, through deception. He wants a, a situation to be shaped in your life. He will let it happen. And you say, hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. I was doing so good in church. Well, you don't think that the trial of your faith means anything to God. You don't think that God wants to see if you're real and genuine. You don't think that Satan is present with us the same way he was with hope. He went and presented himself, and Satan came along with him. Now, you're going to tell me that Satan is not going to be present with us here to try to deceive us? We go through our things, and then the first thing we want to do is blame the brothers, and we want to blame God. Yeah. Nobody gets mad at Satan. Nobody gets up on the altar and says, we got to rebuke Satan in the name of... No, it's all. Look at the pastor. Look at the... ¿Qué es lo que hacemos, hermano? Lo primero que hacemos cuando suceden las cosas, culpamos a los hermanos y culpamos a Dios, en vez de culpar al diablo. Y dice... Mira, exhortados los unos a los otros cada día, entre tanto que se dice hoy. Porque ya mañana puede ser muy tarde para alguno, ¿verdad? Para que ninguno de vosotros se endurezca por el engaño del pecado. Y el pecado tiene una manera de engañarnos. Estás bien en la iglesia, pero tu corazón se está endureciendo, se está endureciendo. Y ya cuando vienes a ver, ya no quieres saber nada en la iglesia. Man, you used to read the Bible, leías la palabra, you used to listen to Christian songs, and all of a sudden now you're... He said, man, I got to surrender to God. Yo tengo que entregarme a Dios. Dios me ama. That's where I'm going to find joy. Man, we, you've tried everything else. Has tratado todo lo otro, no? Give, give, give the Lord an opportunity to change you. Que Dios te ponga a traer esa oportunidad de cambiar tu corazón so that you can come out and say, man, I feel the love of God in my life. I don't care that my father wasn't there. I don't care if my mom wasn't there. I don't care if my wife left me. I don't care if my children don't love me. Jesus Christ loves me. Jesucristo me ama. He will never forsake me. Amen. He's standing at the door. Él está puesto en la, pie, en la puerta. Toca. If anybody opened the door, he's standing at your door. And he's trying to get you to open, but you're so hard-headed. Eres cabeza, eres tuerco. ¿Cómo dice tuerco? No, tu terco. Are you Spanish? Are you Spanish? I don't, I, 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 that word terco. Is it terco or tuerco? ¿Cómo es? Terco. It's like hard-headed, stubborn. Yeah. Somos cabezón. Y Dios está tratando de tocar a la puerta y somos tan cabezones que digo, no, yo lo hago. I can do this myself. I can do this myself. Yo lo hago. I'm tough. Yo soy tough. Yo, yo lo hago. Y, yeah. Our pride and nuestro orgullo. Say, I got this. I got this. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. Because something's going to come into your life where you're going to say, I ain't got this. <laughs> and that's where God allows us to get to so that we realize that we're nothing, but he's everything, right? Go real fast so that we can go. Just remember this. He is asking every one of us. está pidiendo a todo as he stands at the door. He's asking everyone, commanding everyone to repent. Él quiere que todos se arrepientan. Okay? Now, remember, repentance is not only a command, no solamente un mandato, but just we got to realize that it's also a gift, pero también un don. So how can it be a gift and a command at the same time? 100%. You repent, but guess what? God allows repentance. He grants it. He grants repentance. That means he allows it. Now, real fast, go to the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 30. Hechos 17, 30. Tenemos que arrepentirnos porque, solamente, mira, no solamente el arrepentimiento es un mandato del Señor, pero es un don de Dios. Y el Señor lo permite. Hechos 17, 30. Now, the times of this ignorance, in your past, and everything you've done, God winked at. In other words, okay. I ain't going to hold it on your account. But he is now commanding all men everywhere to do what? Amen. Dice, pero Dios habiendo pasado por alto los tiempos de esta ignorancia. Tu tiempo pasado, ya lo Dios lo pasó. You know what you say, you know, you've been doing, you're doing your thing. Okay, that's it. Time for play is over. Ya el tiempo se acabó. Yeah. Ahora él manda a todos los hombres en, este, en todo lugar que hagan qué? So we all have to repent. Todos tenemos que arrepentirnos. Yeah. No need in getting baptized in Jesus Christ's name. 
No need in saying, I'm going to receive the Holy Ghost when you haven't repented. I can repent. Say, you need to change your ways. You got to realize, I am a sinner. I am wrong. And sometimes God allows us to get to the bottom of our life, the worst parts of our life, so that we can say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Yo te necesito. I'm sorry, Lord Jesus. You know? It's like those people that are getting pounded and they keep on fighting. And you're saying, da, da, da. And at the end they go, okay, okay, that's it. I give up. And even then they start going, eh, and they start trying to hit another one. Eh, bah. Are you are you ready? That's it. Okay, okay, I give up. I give up. That's it. We're so hard headed. Stop getting hit in the head so many times. You don't need to. No tienes que te den tanto golpe. Arrepiéntate. Change. Why do you want to go through all that by yourself? And he's standing at the door and he's knocking. Just open the door. Abra su abra la puerta. So not only is the commandment of God. I'm going to end it with this. Lo voy a terminar con esto. It's also a gift. Go to Acts 11, 18. 11, 18. Well, actually, this is another commandment, maybe. No, this is a... Okay. When they heard these things, they held their peace and they glorified God, saying, Then God also to the Gentiles has what? He has allowed repentance. So you see, God will grant you repentance when you repent. So you don't think that he said, oh, I just give up. I said, okay, but God is in total control. Dios está en control. And God will then grant you the repentance. Dios te permite. He says, you know what? God wants to work in your life, but he wants to see something. Él quiere ver un cambio en ti. It's like the people that are getting baptized. All the Pharisees say, hey, show fruits worthy of repentance. Muestren fruto digno de arrepentimiento. I know you're all coming to this baptism that we're having here in the Jordan, but who taught you to flee from the wrath that was to come? Aquí les, aquí les enseñó ustedes de, de huir de la ira venidera. You Pharisees, deceivers, you're only doing this because we're doing it. Show forth fruit. Muestre acciones en tu vida digno de una persona que dice, yo me arrepentí. Now look at this scripture and we'll end it, end it with this one. Go to 2 Timothy 2.25. You look at this. I'm even going to close my Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25. People say, well, Pastor John preached for an hour and 30 minutes today. All right, go ahead. What does it say? What do we need to do, everybody? What do we need to do? All right, I'll say it. I'll tell you what to do. In meekness, in meekness, con mansedumbre. Can someone tell me what meekness is? Really? Anybody else want to take a crack at what meekness is? ¿Qué es lo que significa la mansedumbre? Mansedumbre. You are all fast on those Googles. Excuse me? Okay, so you're meek. So you submit. Yeah? Gently? Are you making that up? Okay, that's what it is. That's exactly okay. I, I wanted to know if you were saying it. So how do you do it? ¿Cómo lo hace? Una forma mansa. Como una persona que es mansa, ay, eso es, esa persona es muy mansito, calmadito, gente. So, with gentleness, with gentleness, what do you do? ¿Qué estamos haciendo? Con mansedumbre, we instruct people that are what? That oppose themselves. So, people that are fighting this way, and you're thinking, man, they need to come to God. They need to change their life. Hold on, relax a second. Don't you realize that they're not being held captive on their own? Don't you realize that their thoughts... It's not that they're bad people. The Bible says, if peradventure will give, if God peradventure will give them repentance, he will allow repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. So be gentle with them. Teach them the word. If perhaps then God will allow repentance to come into their lives. And then what happens in verse 26? So that they may recover themselves out of the trap in which they were in. You're gentle with them. You're giving them the word. You're giving them the word. How long are you going to give them the word, Pastor John? As long as it takes. They're caught in a trap. They're caught in a trap. Ellos están en una, en una, en una, en una, en una artimaña, en una trampa del diablo. Y dice, para que ellos puedan escapar del lazo del diablo en que están cautivos a voluntad de él. They are caught in the snare of the devil and they are taken captive by Satan at his will. 
So say you got the ones that have been set free and the ones that are in traps. Tienen los que fueron hechos libres y los que están todavía en la, en la trampa del diablo. So what do you do that are free? Tú que estás libre. Excuse me? You're going to instruct them. Lo vas a instruir. How do you do that? Patiently. Gently. Hey, you need to get to church. If you don't change your life, you're going to hell. What are you doing? What kind of fisherman are you? ¿Qué clase de pescador eres tú? Eh? Trying to catfish, just throwing chum everywhere. Mm, I'm trying to catch. Well, you say, you take a fisherman and say, what are you doing? Get, get, get away from the edge or you're scaring all the fish. You don't even know how to fish. And you're out there, está como pescador, tirando líneas por todas partes. Y los pescados, woo. And then you got the little quiet fisherman. Lemuel comes along and says, Pastor John, he's like the fish whisperer. Relax. He gets a little thing. He goes, what are you putting on the bait? What are you putting? You're putting popcorn on there? The fish don't eat popcorn. They don't eat bread. Look, come here. You see the little thing? The brother Lemuel does a little thing. Go, be quiet. Everybody be quiet. Boom. They got him on there. Come on. Woo. All right, now you start fighting. People know how to fish. Some people don't know how to fish, right? And you're out there trying to win everybody for the Lord, and you're scout. Listen, they're caught in a trap at the will of Satan, and you think that by screaming at them, by telling them to change, and that they're going to hell, and that the way they're dressed and all this, that they're going to say, oh, yes, I'm going to say. Instructing them meekly, enseñándole, hermano, con mansedumbre, para que Dios, so that God would allow repentance to come into their life. Because then, when you're being taught, God is looking at your heart, and he's saying, man, this brother's really trying to change. This guy's trying. So what happens is like the, 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 the prodigal son, es como el hijo pródigo. He was out there living right, but the moment that he got up and he came to his senses and he started walking toward his father, his father from a distance saw him and he ran unto his son. Right. So God, you do your part and God will do his part. Tú haces tu parte, Dios va a hacer su parte. Are you ready to surrender? Are you ready to open the door? ¿Estás listo para abrir la puerta? He is standing at the door. Él está puesto a la puerta tuya and he's knocking. If you're too busy in your house and you're too busy with your life and you think you got it all good, that's okay. Don't, don't allow him to come in. Personally, without the Lord, I don't got nothing. Come in, Lord, please. Sup with me. I need you. My family needs you. My wife needs you. My children need you. Everybody in my family needs you. Please come in. I'm not leaving you outside. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand. I'm going to let you in. We truly give honor and glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Le damos la honra y la gloria al Señor Jesucristo. And we thank God for the word today. Gracias a Dios le damos por la palabra. Thank God for all our visitors. Gracias a Dios por nuestro hermano que nos visitan este día. Que el Señor lo bendiga. May the Lord bless our visiting brother. And may he bless every one of you. Even for those that are watching on Facebook and YouTube. Y hasta los que están viendo por Facebook and YouTube. Everybody want to say hi to them? Sure, why not? All right. Everybody want to be popular today? Just if you start getting people stopping you on the street, just remember. Wow. Can you say praise the Lord to everybody? Lord. Say praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. Lord, everybody. All right. They, they actually think the people are alive in here. So please, okay? Uh, we'll do that one more time. Praise the Lord. Brother Nigel. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. We truly thank God for our pastor. We thank God for the word of God that really can change our lives. The word really can come and it can rearrange everything that we think if we allow it to. Amen. We have to allow the word to do that. So I surrender all. I surrender all, all to him, my precious Savior, I surrender all, I surrender all. Savior, I 
I surrender all. No Spanish for the night. Meditate and understand who God is and what he wants for our lives. Surrendering is an easy thing. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. That's what repentance is, surrendering. Surrendering our whole being, our whole life unto him. And he'll make everything great. Even though we go through, it'll be awesome living with the Lord. Amen. No further ado, I'm going to ask my brother to come and lead us out in a word of prayer. Peace of the Lord, saints. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I just we just give you thanks, Lord Jesus, for giving us another day of life, yes. another day of breath, another day of being able to get it right with you, Father God. Yes. I pray, Lord Jesus, for the people watching and for anybody here, Lord, that you would grant them repentance, Father yes. God, and that you would work your love in our hearts, Father God, so that with meekness we can teach them, Father God, so that repentance may be granted unto them, Lord Jesus. Yes. Just ask, Father God, that you would just fill with your Holy Ghost this place, Father God, yes, and that you would take over, Lord, that you would take control. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen.